Hello, Pestilence here. Reshooting my video that I had originally uh, shot on Saturday for Stock Lock Sunday. Uh, it is not a picking video, but another informational, not infomercial, informational. And it is on from the uh, Series 800 padlock from Yale, although it is also called uh, the Standard Series. Now, to give you a little background information, uh, Linus Yale Jr., who is credited as being the uh, inventor of the modern pin tumbler uh, padlock, there were crude pin locks back in Egypt and um, then thereafter, but he um, turned them into a modern marvel. It's uh, what we're familiar with today. Uh, now, Linus Yale Jr. and Henry R. Town, they were uh, introduced by a friend. They formed the Yale Lock Manufacturing Company in October of 1868, and that was located in Stamford, Connecticut. Uh, now, on December 25th of 1868, Linus Hill Jr. died. Uh, he died suddenly of heart disease, and he was only 44, or no, he was 47 years old. Sorry about that. Okay, now, the 800, or as I said, the Standard Series, first appeared in 1878. Uh, I've gotten a lot of this information from different catalogs that uh, were produced by Yale. Now, um, here is one of the Yale padlocks, the earlier ones, and it has the patent dates on it. And I knew I should have put my, my glasses on. Uh, the years are 1876, 1877, 1877, and 1878. So, while they received patents for this back in 1876, according to the company, they didn't appear in production, apparently, until 1878. Now, These are referred to in the 1884 catalog as brass tumblers. And then following uh, catalogs, 1905 as lever or lever tumblers, once again 1910 as lever tumblers, and in 1929 as lever tumblers in cast bronze padlocks. So, now these use a flat key. I'll put my notes down here. As you can see, it is a flat key. No ridges, no nothing. And here are original keys. Now, see this? Very well could be original key. It's nice and thick, but uh, this and the padlock itself had been gone over with, it looks like a wire wheel, and it may have taken off some of the details, unfortunately. Why, why, if I can spit it out. Whereas, uh, this one has the original writing on it, original numbers and everything. So, very nice. Once again, nice and flat. Now, according to the Yale catalog, the flat key was used prior to 1878. However, we haven't seen uh, any uh, locks of this variety before that. So, what they could be talking about are the iron body locks, the 800 series, which I may do uh, a video on later. And those are the push key. Now corrugated, the corrugated key was the next innovation and that was adopted around 1878 
and then the paracentric key was adopted about 1892 for pin tumbler locks. Uh, you can tell the difference. The corrugation uh, is not for getting or well. I won't get into the details on that because I don't fully understand it uh, to really uh, define it well enough. However, um, they didn't stop making the locks just because they they changed over to the different keys. What they did was they would use the um, the keys for lesser security locks on lesser security locks. And so they, they kept them in production, but uh, the standard became the paracentric key, which was for the pin tumbler. Now, in 1883, the company was renamed the Yale and Town Manufacturing Company. So, what does that mean here? Well, these all have Um, it's not, let's see if I can show it better. It's stamped into the shackle. It's not part of the shackle. And it says Yale Lock Manufacturing. And it has uh, Stanford, Connecticut underneath there. And then uh, there's the patent dates. Now I have this rubber band down here because there was a piece that uh, broke off, it looks like, from the inside. Um, when I first received the lock, it was locked. And I put uh, different picks in there and it was all jammed up. And so when I got it unjammed and popped this open, this piece on the top had fallen out from the keyway. So this is an 863. Now they have one larger than this. Then I have a trio of 853s. And you can see where it's stamped in the top here, Yale Lock Manufacturing Company. And it has the patent dates on the back. This one works extremely well. There we go. And then I do have two other versions of that one with the rusty old chain. And then this one, which uh, <laughs> um, it's missing two pins here, and it looks like somebody removed this pin, put it back in, and peened it down. Uh, it has really a nice stamp mark up here, Yale Lock Comp uh, Manufacturing Company, Stanford, Connecticut, and the patent dates are really clear and everything is really nice. Just accept that it's missing the pins and somebody did a number on the shackle and so it does not close. Uh, I've determined that the best way that I could possibly put that back into um, a serviceable shape would be to heat it up and then to bend it down because using a hammer on it and pounding just you know isn't going to do the trick. So I've got uh, those three. This one here is also a Yale 853, only it is uh, uh, Yale and town. And you can see the differences is that part of the lock, part of the shackle is uh, Yale and town and the other information on there. It's not stamped in, it's been um, formed into it. Uh, like this one, Yale and Town, and all the information is sunken in. And as you can see, these are 843s, this one and this one. There's another difference that I've found as well on some of these. 
which uh, is kind of odd. See this one, if you look at Yale, look at the font, the L is more of a straight L, whereas if you look at this one, it's more of a fancier L. With this one, well this is a Yale in town, and it's a straight L. But this one is a Yale in town, and it has that fancier L. So, odd, odd, odd. Now, let's move up to the 833, which is this little fellow. Once again, stamped in, has that fancier L, has the patent dates, and this one is open uh, primarily because once I was able to get it picked open, uh, if I close it, it's uh, it's more difficult to get some of these to pop open. Uh, these other ones I haven't been able to pick. Like I said, the, the biggest one I did at the cost of, um, I don't know what that is in, that goes in there, but it, uh, it broke out. So here is an 823. Once again, it's got the flat L. It's got the stamping in there. It's got the patent dates on there, except this says Yale and Town Manufacturing Company on there. So just, you know, once again, another variety that I'm not sure why. It has the patent dates. It has Yale and Town instead of Yale on it. And the flat L font. Here is an 813, and it has the straight L, once again, stamped in there, patent dates, and the keys. Opens really nicely. And so, What I have found is that uh, there are, I believe, two more sizes. Let's see. Let me see if these are in frame. I'll move these out of the way. The smallest size is for a dog collar, and then there is, I believe, a larger one than this. But this is the 863, 853, 843, 833, 823, and 813. So. Most of these are from the late 1870s because uh, they were manufactured before they went into production on the Yale and Town with the cloverleaf or trefoil design. And also, as I've said, they have the Yale Lock Manufacturing Company uh, stamped into the shackle, and it's not molded in as with this. That's a pretty chewed up. This one's a better example. And this one was also used by the... Huh, where are your glasses, man? TPT and T Company which it looks like they've got the C backwards. Uh, that is the, uh, basically it's AT&T, but uh, out west, California, around there. 
So, um, another thing that I've noticed is with the uh, the shackles or the uh, the chain holder on the shackle. The older ones are thicker. This is a thinner style. This is a thicker style. Sometimes the chains differ quite a bit. Um, these are closer, but the bend in it is a, a little different, um, which may, may or may not mean too much. But sometimes that is also a way to, uh, to differentiate. Now this one does not have an original key as far as I can tell, but I have seen this, uh, this design with the bow uh, in use with other locks. And this one does not pop up quite as easily. So, I believe that uh, These would be from the late 1870s, as the uh, catalog said. Uh, they first appeared in 1878 and probably stopped production, I would think, 1880s, which, once again, I can't prove, um, but I believe that the Yale and Town then started appearing on the locks. And uh, oddly enough, there is the one that I can't explain why it has the Yale and Town stamped in it. So I'm sure, sure somebody may know. But there we have it. And also, the uh, like I said before, the keys are flat on these. And on the newer uh, models, the key is kind of bowed, kind of cupped. And you can tell... Uh, this is flat across there, and this has a slight bowing on, it, on the outside. That's another thing about this one. Somebody popped out that bottom plate, unfortunately. So if I was going to restore this, I would have to get another plate and um, somehow get it to pop in there. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope there was some information in there usable to you. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care. Stay legal. Bye.